Good morning students how are you all i hope you all are fine i mrs ann mary is here to explain the chapter the adventure of toto by ruskin bond ruskin bond was born on 19th may 1934 he is an indian author of british descent he lives with his adopted family in masuri india The Indian Council for Child Education has recognized his role in the growth of children's literature in India. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1992 for Our Trees Still Grow in Dehra, his novel in English. He was awarded the Padma Shri in 1999 and the Padma Bhushan in 2014. the meaning of adventure an adventure is an exciting experience that is typically a bold sometimes risky undertaking adventures may be activity with some potential for physical danger such as traveling exploring skydiving mountain climbing scuba diving river rafting and so on but here the meaning of adventure is little different Now the adventures of Toto a short summary the story describes how a grandfather was fond of animals he bought a monkey namely Toto from a Tonga driver for 5 rupees the Tonga driver used to keep the monkey tied to a feeding trough as the grandfather had his own private zoo so he decided he would add Toto to his zoo Now Toto was a pretty monkey his fingers were quick and he used his tail as a third hand he used it to hang from a branch of a tree his presence was kept secret from grandmother as she did not like animals toto was very naughty one day he disturbed many things in the room therefore grandmother decided to transfer him to a big cage where other animals lived Now let's start the story the adventures of Toto Have you ever had a baby monkey as a pet Toto is a baby monkey Now let's find out whether he is mischievous or docile docile means obedient Grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver for the sum of 5 rupees The Tonga driver used to keep the little red monkey tied to a feeding trough and the monkey looked so out of place there that grandfather decided he would add the little fellow to his private zoo feeding trough means it's a large container for feeding animals and tonga the word here is used tonga which means horse cart now the writer's grandfather purchased a monkey named toto from a Tonga driver by paying 5 rupees to him the tonga driver had tied a little red colored monkey to a feeding trough so that he could not run away now when the writer's grandfather saw the monkey he had a desire to add him to the collection of animals which he had in his zoo at home toto was a pretty monkey his bright eyes sparkle with mischief beneath deep set eyebrows and his teeth which were a pearly white were very often displayed in a smile that frightened the life out of elderly anglo indian ladies but his hands looked dried up as though they had been pickled in the sun for many years yet his fingers were quick and wicked and his tail while adding to his good looks Grandfather believed a tail would add to anyone's good looks also served as a third hand he could use it to hang from a branch and it was capable of scooping up an indelicacy that might be out of reach of his hands now anglo indian it means a person relating to both britain and india and pickled is what food that is preserved in vinegar and scooping up lifting Now the writer gives a description of Toto in this paragraph 
So what he said? He said that he had bright shiny eyes which were full of mischief. The, the eyebrows were deeply set on his face. His teeth were like pearls. Many ladies belonging to the Anglo-Indian community got scared when they saw his teeth which were displayed when he smiled. Toto's hands were dry and wrinkled as if they have been dried in the sun like pickled vegetables. He had a long tail. The writer's grandfather thought that the tail added to the good looks of an animal. Now Toto's tail was like a third hand for him. It helped him hang from the branch of a tree and he also used it to lift objects which were beyond his hands reached. Now grandmother always fussed when grandfather brought home some new bird or animal. So it was decided that Toto's present should be kept a secret from her until she was in a particularly good mood. Grandfather and I put him away in a little closet opening into my bedroom wall where he was tied securely or so we thought to a peg fastened into the wall. Now peg is what? It's a hook. Now here the writer's grandmother was against the grandfather's attitude of bringing new pets, birds and animals like. So the grandfather thought that they would conceal this fact from her until she was in a good mood. They were waiting for the good mood of a grandmother. So at that time what happened? They would disclose this to her. Now the writer and his grandfather secured Toto means kept Toto in a little cupboard in the writer's room. Why? In order to be sure that Toto did not escape. Now they tied him to a hook in the wall. A few hours later, when grandfather and I came back to release Toto, we found that the walls which had been covered with some ornamental papers chosen by grandfather now stood out as naked brick and plaster. The peg in the wall had been wrenched from its socket and my school blazer which had been hanging there was in shreds. Now I wonder what grandmother would say. But grandfather didn't worry. He seemed pleased with Toto's performance. Pleased with Toto's performance? Happy on seeing that. Now ornamental is what? It's a decorative. And naked means uncovered. Something uncovered. Wrenched is what? Broke. Socket attachment. Have you seen socket? We all are having at our homes also. Shred means cut into thin slices. Now what happened? The writer and his grandfather went to Toto after a few hours. Now the sight was shocking. Toto had torn the decorative wallpaper. He had broken the hook and had escaped from his binding also. He tore the writer's blazer into thin pieces. Just think about. Now, He is clever, sad grandfather. Given time, I am sure, he could have tied the torn pieces of your blazer into a rope and made his escape from the window. Just see. The grandfather was quite delighted. Delighted means he was happy to see Toto's adventure. He felt that Toto was very clever. He said that if they would have given him more time, so he would have tied the thin pieces of the writer's torn blazer into a rope. And would have escaped out of the window. Just see. His presence in the house tell a secret. Toto was now transferred to a big cage. In the servants quarters. Where a number of grandfather's pets lived. Very sociably together. Like what? A tortoise. A pair of rabbits. A tame squirrel. And for a while my pet goat. But the monkey wouldn't allow any of his companions to sleep at night. You know the nature of monkey. So, grandfather who had to leave Dehradun next day to collect his pension in Saharanpur decided to take him along. So, Shibli means in a very friendly manner. Now, Toto was shifted to the servant's quarter and he was put it in a cage. He would live with the other pets in grandfather's zoo. He was actually the grandfather was having a good collection of animals. All right. So like, uh, like tortoise, a pair of rabbits, a squirrel, and the writer's pet goat. Toto was very mischievous, as I already told you. 
he did not let the animal sleep at night the writer's grandfather had to leave for saharanpur the next day he decided to take toto along as he was unmanageable who was unmanageable obviously toto unfortunately i could not accompany grandfather on that trip but he told me about it afterwards a big black canvas kit bag was provided for toto this with some straw at the bottom became his new abode now when the bag was closed there was no escape toto could not get his hands through the opening and the canvas was too strong for him to bite his way through his efforts to get out only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor or occasionally jumped into the air an exhibition that attracted a curious crowd of onlookers on the dehradun railway platform abode means a place to live in home now the writer was disappointed why as he could not accompany his grandfather and toto on the trip his grandfather narrated the happening of the trip to him later to his grandson he had got a special bag for toto and it was made of strong material canvas he placed some dry grass at the bottom of the bag and on the trip the bag would be toto's home as he would live in it now the bag had a zipper on the top of it the writer's grandfather ensured that when the bag was closed toto would not be able to escape out of it neither could he come out of the opening as it was closed with the zipper now there could be bite the strong canvas material in order to run away still toto made unsuccessful attempt to come out of the bag now due to this many times the bag would roll on the floor or it would certainly jumped in the air now these movements were noticed by the people on the railway platform and made them curious to know what was inside the bag toto remained in the bag as far as saharanpur but but while grandfather was producing his ticket at the railway turnstile toto suddenly poked his head out of the bag and gave the ticket collector a wide grin turnstile means it's a mechanical gate consisting of revolving horizontal arms type you have seen in metro stations also now what happened toto remained secure in grandfather's bag till saharanpur and after that what happened at the saharanpur railway station the writer's grandfather was taking out his ticket to uh, cross the turnstile so at that time toto peeked out he peeped out of the bag and smiled at the ticket collector the poor man was taken aback but with great presence of mind and much to grandfather's annoyance he said so you have a dog with you you'll have to pay for it accordingly annoyance means to anger something now the ticket collector was astonished to see a monkey in grandfather's bag he recovered quickly and asked grandfather to pay the ticket money for traveling with a dog in vain did grandfather take toto out of the bag in vain did he try to prove that a monkey did not qualify as a dog or even as a quadruped now toto was classified a dog by the ticket collector and 3 rupees was the sum handed over as is fair vain means an unsuccessful attempt and quadruped means an animal which has 4 feet fair is what f a r e it is a ticket price there is a difference between f a i r and f a r e so don't get confused so grandfather was unsuccessful in explaining to the ticket collector that toto was a monkey and not a dog he insisted that toto was not even an animal with four feet but the ticket collector was firm that toto fell in the category of dogs so grandfather had to pay rupees 3 for toto's ticket the grandfather just to get his own back took from his pocket out pet tortoises and said what must i pay for this since you charge for all animals now to get his own back is an idiom actually and it is to take revenge of something now grandfather was disappointed and he and in order to take revenge from the ticket collector he took out his pet tortoises from his pocket and he asked 
if he was supposed to buy a ticket for it too. Now the ticket collector looked closely at the tortoise, prodded with prodded it with his forefinger, gave grandfather a pleased and triumphant look, and said, "No charge. It's not a dog." Prodded means push something. Pushed. So the ticket collector took a close look at the tortoise and pushed it slightly, and announced that grandfather was not required to buy a ticket for it, as it did not fall in the category of dog. Now, when Toto was finally accepted by grandmother, he was given a comfortable home in the stable, where he had for a companion the family donkey Nana. The name of the donkey was Nana. And on Toto's first night in the stable, grandfather paid him a visit to see if he was uncomfortable. To his surprise, he found Nana without apparent cause, pulling at her halter and trying to keep her head as far as possible from a bundle of. Hey, stable is what building set apart and adapted for keeping horses where the horses live. Halter is what a strap or loop placed around the head of a horse or other animals used to lead it. Yes. Now the companion, the family donkey Nana, on Toto's first night in the stable. Stable already I told you it's a building set apart and adapted for keeping horses. Grandfather paid him a visit to see if he was comfortable. To his surprise, he found Nana without apparent cause, pulling at her halter. Halter is what? A strap or loop, that loop that is placed around the head of a horses or other animals used to leading or tethering it, and trying to keep her head as far as possible from a bundle of hay. Now the writer's grandmother finally came to know of Toto's presence in the house. She came to know about that. Now she allotted him place in the stable. Along with the family donkey Nana, the name of the donkey was Nana. So on the first night in the stable, grandfather visited zoo, visited Toto. He found Nana restless, pulling rope in order to stay away from the heap of. Grandfather gave Nana a slap across her haunches. Haunches means at the back, and she jerked back, dragging Toto with her. He had fastened on. To her long ears with his sharp little teeth. Now Toto and Nana never became friends. Now what happened? Grandfather hit Nana on the back in order to stop it. Now Nana jumped back with a jerk, and Toto was dragged along with her. A great treat for Toto during cold winter evenings was the large bowl of warm water, warm water given him by grandmother for his. But now he would cunningly test the temperature with his hand, then gradually stepped into the bath. First one foot, then the other. Just see how smart he was, as he had seen me doing until he was into the water up to his neck. Now, once comfortable, he would take the soap in his hands or feet and rub himself, and rub himself all over. Now, when the water became cold, he would get out and run as quickly as he could to the kitchen fire in order to dry himself. If anyone laughed at him during this performance, Toto's feeling would be hurt, and he would refuse to go on with his bath. One day, Toto nearly succeeded in boiling himself alive. Now, what happened? In the winter season, Toto enjoyed having a warm bath. He would pretend to be selfish, and before starting his bath. He would check the temperature of the water, like we human being usually do. So he would copy the writer and stepped into the tub, one foot at a time. Finally, he would sit in the water with his face out of it. Then he would rub himself with soap. When the water became cold, he would run out of it to the stove in the kitchen in order to dry himself. Now Toto got annoyed if he was laughed upon by anyone. He would get hurt and then refuse to take bath. The writer recollects an incident when Toto had almost boiled himself. Now, a large kitchen kettle had been left on the fire to boil for tea, and Toto, finding himself with nothing better to do, decided to remove the lid. Finding the water just warm enough for a bath, he 
he got in with his head sticking out from the open kettle. This was just fine for a while until the water began to boil. Now Toto then raised himself a little but finding it cold outside, sat down again. He continued hopping up and down for some time until grandmother arrived and howled him, half boil out of the kettle. Howled him means pulled him out. Now in a large kettle, what happened? Water was boiling on the stove. You know the stove, na? Now Toto climbed up to stove and removed and removed the lid from it. He felt that the water was warm enough for him to take a bath. He entered the kettle with his head out of it. Now when the water started boiling, it became hot for Toto. Now he thought of coming out of the kettle but as the temperature outside was cold for him, he stayed in it. Toto kept on jumping in the kettle for a while. Now it was when the writer's grandmother arrived that she took the half-boiled monkey out of the kettle. Just see what he has done. If there is a part of the brain especially devoted to mischief, that part was largely developed in Toto. He was always tearing things into pieces. Whenever one of my aunts came near him, he made every effort to get hold of her dress and tear a hole in it. Now, if there is a part in our brain that governs our ability to create mischief, then that part who is having only Toto's brain. He was highly developed as he had great capacity to do mischief. Now, he was always busy doing mischief. Whenever the writer aunt passed him, he tried to tear their dresses also. Now, one day at lunchtime, a large dish of plow stood in the center of the dining table. We entered the room to find Toto stuffing himself with rice. My grandmother screamed and Toto threw a plate at her. One of my aunts rushed forward and received a glass of water in the face. Now, when grandfather arrived, Toto picked up the dish of plow and made his exit through a window. He found him in the branches of the jackfruit tree. Jackfruit tree, the dish still in his arms. He remained there all afternoon, eating slowly through the rice, determined on finishing every grain. And then, in order to spite grandmother who had screamed at him, he threw the dish down from the tree and chattered with delight when it broke into a hundred pieces. Now, spite is what? It is a desire to hurt someone. And chattered the sound made by the monkey. Now what happened? The writer recollects another incident. When Toto created a lot of mischief at lunchtime. A dish of rice was placed on the dining table. And when the family reached to eat, they found Toto eating it. The writer's grandmother screamed at Toto. And in response, what, the, what Toto did? He threw a plate at her. Now, when the aunts tried to catch Toto, he threw a glass of water in their face. Now, when the grandfather arrived, Toto left the place through a window with the dish of rice along with him. Now, Toto remained out there entire afternoon and he sat on the branch, branch of the jackfruit tree, determined to eat all the rice. So, as the grandmother had screamed on him, he wanted to annoy her intentionally. So, after eating the rice, what he did? He threw the dish. It broke into several pieces. Obviously, Toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long. Even grandfather realized that we were not well to do and could not afford the frequent loss of dishes, clothes, curtains and wallpaper. So, grandfather found the Tonga driver and sold Toto back to him for only 3 rupees. Now what happened finally? Grandfather realized that Toto was not suitable to be kept at home. They could not afford the frequent losses that he gave them. He tore clothes, curtains, scratched the wallpapers and broke even the dishes also. So the grandfather sold Toto back to the same Tonga driver for a sum of 3 rupees. I hope you like the chapter, the story and the moral of the chapter or the lesson from the story, the adventure of Toto is what? Is that one must behave responsibly in a good environment. Toto threw plates upon grandma and her friends which forced grandma 
grandpa to return him to the tonga owner toto disturbed all the other animals and birds even in grandfather's private zoo the chapter is over dear students now read it once again thank you and have a nice day ahead